Sorry I'm late. What? Yeah, what? We're supposed to have a breakfast meeting to discuss our joint uh, business. Breakfast meeting? Well, I can see you resisted the um, the, uh, the temptation to make an effort. Yeah, Stephen. What? No smell of fresh coffee, and why do I suspect that there's no croissants warming in the oven? Hmm? Listen, Dev. Now is not a good time. Can we do this another day? No, we can't. I've got other businesses to run. My time is precious. So why don't I make us some coffee while you go and uh, pour yourself together? We we haven't got any coffee. Oh, well, then I'll make tea then. You know, one day we're going to have a meeting like this on a veranda of a villa in a Tuscan hill, Stevie boy. You and me, my friend, we'll sit there basking in the early morning sunshine when a lovely Mrs. McDonald slices fresh fruit for our breakfast. I threw Karen out last night. No, oh, really? What? She uh, refused to slice fruit? I caught her playing away with Joe Carter. You're not having anything? No, sir. I've smoked. I'm not hungry. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, you know? I don't want anything. My supervisor, yeah. I order you to have something to eat. What do they say? Breakfast like a king, lunch like a nobleman. Right, I'll have some toast, two slices, eight and don't be mean with the butter. Right here. If Janice comes in, I'm off. If you had anything in your fridge, we wouldn't be here, would we? Why'd you have to pick on me anyway? Why couldn't you find somewhere else to stay when your husband kicked you out? Because I couldn't think of anywhere else to go, all right? Besides, I needed someone to talk to. A lot of thinking to do. You don't need me to think. Yeah, I do, actually. Because I need to think and talk at the same time. You know, I need to talk to think. Oh, yeah, my Kirk's a bit like that with his reading. Anyway, what are you going to do? Because you can't stay at mine again, you know. If Janice finds out, she's going to kill me. All right, he'll come crawling back. I know he will. Are you sure? You've been winding him up something rotten. Hey, I haven't done anything wrong. I mean, I've done a little bit of flirting, but, I mean, that's it. I've been faithful to my husband since the day I married him. Oh, pull the other one, Kathy. It's got bells on. Oh, where? Where am I wrong Joe Carter. That's right. Your best friend. Look, he's no friend of mine. No, you used to enjoy robbing warehouses. Look, together. Just get out, Dev, will you? Just... Right, come on, I'm sorry. Sit down. But you can't say I didn't warn you about him. Oh, it's not just him, is it? Sir. And you're absolutely sure about this? Of course I'm sure, Dev. They've been sniffing around each other for months. I should have kicked it out ages ago. Well, I'm shocked. What can I say? I always thought that you and Karen actually had something, you know? Kind of a bit weird, but kind of uh, made for each other. So what are you going to do? I don't know. Carry on, go to work. I mean, what do you think I'm going to do? Well, revenge would be appropriate. They're not worth it. You still care about her. No. She's still your wife. So? So there's no shame in still having some feelings for her. Dev, I know what happens next. She won't be out to last the day. She'll come crawling back with more excuses and lies. Only this time it's not going to work because it is definitely over. <laughs> Have you lost something? Have you seen last night's takings? Cos I put them on the till and somebody's moved them. Yeah, Peter's up to the bank. Peter? Yeah, that's right, love. Well, I told him I was going to do that. Yeah, but, I mean, he was going into town. Yeah, but... Look, don't ask me, love. I mean, I only work here. I mean, that Peter is in, he's out. I don't know if he's coming or going. I'll put the kettle on. Already done. The tea's in the pot. Excuse me, love. Have you cleaned the lavies and all? <laughs> I've left that for you, love. Oh, bless you. Hello, Rover's return. Oh, hello, Shelley, love. How are you? Ah, oh. No, no, he's not. He said he was going into town, love. You can put it away now, Norris. I, I, I don't know why it's taken him so long. What are they? Oh, uh, a jury service. Uh, I've had the call. It's time for me to sit in judgment on my fellow man. It's two months away. So listen to me, Henry Fonda. You're going to need time off to dispense justice, aren't you? Well, yes, but I mean, when the Crown calls... Well, you can have as much time off as you need, on one condition. I don't hear another word about jury service in this shop. She's only jealous. Hey, you're out early, Fred. Uh, Joshua, he seems to have taken against sleep for some reason. All oh, right. How is it going? Exhausting. You wouldn't credit it, would you? I say you wouldn't credit it. How many butchers does it take to look after one babby? More than two. Well, you can leave it with me for an hour if you want a break. I hope you mean that. But he's always been good as gold with me. Can I help See you? you, Fred? Hey, These you magazines are a bit costly here, aren't they? I think you'll find they're the same price in all the news agents. Yeah, yes, but what is the incentive for me to come in here and buy these? Inertia. What? 
put it this way. Do you really want to leave this nice warm shop and walk all the way down to Inkerman Street? I mean, time and shoe leather, Jack. Think about it. By now, save yourself the bother. What do you do with the magazines that you don't sell? Oh, we just give those away free to the neighbours. Oh, right. No, of course we don't. We send them back to wholesalers. Oh. Look, if it's free magazines you want, why don't you just go and sit in a doctor's waiting room? It's not the hard stuff. It's really soft. I've tried it. We all use toilet paper, don't we? I've plenty, thank you. Yeah, but what if you run out? I won't run out. Kev bought some, didn't you, mate? Uh, yeah. And it's soft, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> not tried it yet. Come on, it's a bargain. Should we go around and see how she is? Why? Do you like hospital food? No. Well, you know what Tommy... Come on, you. You know what Tommy's like. He thinks we've spiked his daughter's drink, then he'll skin us alive and use our pelts for cushion covers or something. Tyrone, we didn't spike a drink. And how come she was as drunk as she was? She was sick as a dog. You don't get a lot of drinking orange juice. I want a word with you. Listen, mate, we didn't do a thing, honestly. Yes, you did. You brought her back safely, and Chris said that she's going to be all right. But why? Is she still in hospital? Yeah. She was unconscious because she's got diabetes. Uh, is she going to be OK? Yeah, she's going to be fine. So anyway, thanks for bringing her back as quick as you did, and uh, I'm sorry I had a go at you. <laughs> it's no problem, mate, honestly. <laughs> See you in a bit, yeah? Hi, Tom. Oh, hiya. How's Katie? Yeah, she's going to be all right. Angela's with her. Mate, she's going to be fine. Good. A bit scary, mind, eh? Yeah. Listen, I can't thank you enough for last night. Nah, don't worry about it. It's not over, though. It's going to take a lot of getting used to. Yeah, but we're going to be there for her. Yeah, OK. Anything I can do to help, just ask. Thanks. See ya. Ta -da. Today's the day the teddy bears have the picnic. A picnic time. So we've decided on the bench then for Maxine, not the tree. Oh, yeah, the bench. Well, aren't you right? It'd be nice to have somewhere to sit and think about her on a sunny day. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and we can have a nice plank done, can't we? Yes. So, shall I set things in motion, then? Get the ball rolling? Yeah, OK. <laughs> well, I might see you this dinner time at the Rovers. You're not taking it bad. It's too smoky. No, no, I wouldn't do that, would I? No, no. In the back room. Yeah, go on, then. Hey, we'll see you later. Yeah, oh, dear. Oh, um, and any second thoughts on the nanny question? Yeah, we can cope by ourselves. Hey, can you be good for Grandad? Yes. Oh. Right, what do you want to do about it? I mean, uh, you know, how do you want to play this? What are you acting so jumpy for? We haven't done anything, remember? I mean, this is all in his head. Yeah. You were in my head and all. So? Can't touch you for thinking about it. Well, maybe I could talk to him. Make it clear that nothing happened. Don't you dare. This is Steve that's acting the fool. You're not going to let him off the hook that easy. <laughs> he thinks we slept together. And he's living in fantasy land. Look, don't worry, he'll wake up. That's when all the groveling will start. I just think if he knew the truth... I have told him the truth. Look, this isn't my fault and this isn't your fault. I mean, this is 100% deluded Steve MacDonald. Joe, I know my own husband. And I know how his twisted little mind works. So can you stop worrying? Because he'll be crawling back to me at the end of the day. You did what? I kicked it out. Well, and I don't want to talk about it, OK? And I don't want you talking about it on the radio. What does she do? We'll take a guess. You caught her at it? I didn't need to. And I thought I just said I don't want to talk about it, or was that some kind of strange echo? So she admitted it, then? Look, I'm not listening to you. Mrs Armstrong's got a train to catch. Yeah, well, she can wait. It'll probably be late anyway. So what did she say? She said exactly what I thought she would. She denied it? Exactly. Yeah, but what if she's telling the truth? Oh, what are the chances of that? And if she calls, don't put her through. Last night was supposed to be about team building, not marriage, reckon. Mike, nothing happened. Steve got the wrong end of the stick, that's all. We'll all be behind out soon enough, all right? What happened to you and Joe last night? Maybe they were discussing industrial relations. Nothing happened. That's not what your Steve thought. And what do you know about it? Well, I saw him. He was having kittens. You want to be careful. You know something's going on, and so do we. Let me make one thing crystal clear to you, Janice. There is nothing going on between me and Joe now. I'm telling you that. You go and ask him and he'll tell you exactly the same thing. Only I wouldn't recommend it. Because if he hears you spreading your malicious little lies around, he'll have you out that door before your feet even touch the ground. Well, 
Where's Dad? At work. Must be a disappointment to wake up and find me here. Don't start, Mum. Sorry. We've all been really worried about you. Yeah. It's worried about me and Al. Mum, what's going on? How come we're in hospital? Look, the first thing is, I'm sorry. I've been going on at you and I shouldn't have. You're a good kid, I know that, and I should give you some more space. I'm ill. Is that why you've been nice to me? You passed out. Yeah. Then woke up in here. We thought them lads had spiked your drink, but they hadn't. Apparently, your blood sugar levels are unbalanced and that's why you lost consciousness. The doctors tried to explain, but you were still very dazed. You're diabetic. Diabetic? I'm diabetic? Yeah. How can that be? Like, suddenly one day I pass out, wake up, and I'm, I'm diabetic? Well, the doctor said that's why you were drinking so much all the time and you were tired because you weren't making enough insulin. Do you know what diabetic is? <laughs> it means I'm going to have to have injections. Yeah, but the doctor said that a lot. Every day. <sighs> For the rest of my life. Oh, come here, hello. I don't want it. You can't say she doesn't deserve it if she's messing around behind his back. Mm, that's very moral of you. I'm not a very moral person. Oh, but would you feel the same way if you were in um, Karen's shoes? Me and Karen McDonald's shoes. Oh, look who you're talking to. If I ever, I mean, when I get married, I would never be unfaithful to my husband. <laughs> That's a bold claim. It's a simple truth. When I make my marriage vows, it will be to a man I know I want to spend the rest of my life with. Oh. But that's because you're a bright ray of hope in this dark, cynical, cynical world of ours. Mm. Oh, and the devil himself just walked into my shop. This is the famous Joe Carter. Don't look into his eyes, you'll instantly fall in love. Just the sugar, Joe. Just the sugar. I thought McDonald was a friend. Or is it because he's now my business partner? Is that why his wife seems more, um, what, attractive to you? <laughs> the man's a virus. If you get too close, you'll get infected. She called? No. She will. Anyway, I've had enough. I'm going back to the flat. Right. Yeah. Got spring cleaning to do. Took all the stuff out, you see. You can tell her that when she calls. Hey. Nice cracker. Mm. Very tasty. See you tomorrow. That was useless. Just so frightened that I couldn't tell her anything. I don't know anything. She's every right to be scared. I know she has. I'd be scared if I were a diabetic and had to inject myself <laughs> every day. Question is, how can we help her when we know so little about it? Makes me wish I'd become a doctor rather than a mechanic. <laughs> yeah, like you had a choice. <laughs> Made you smile, though, eh? Yeah, well, maybe you should have been a comedian. <laughs> but by the time we've read these leaflets, we'll both be experts. No sign of Steve, then? Knows where I am. Right, well, if you still don't come round, you still have to find somewhere else to stay, yeah? Got any suggestions? Well, I've heard Joe's got a big bed. For that, I'm going to stay at yours all week, even after Steve's apologised and begged me to go back. <laughs> you know, it's very absorbent. Yeah, it's strong as well. I mopped up some oil with it earlier, don't you know? Stay strong even when soggy. Oh, it's nice to have satisfied customers. You got any left? That my last five packs. Hey, get them, Kev. Like Good man. I'll bring you around this afternoon. Is that right? You have sold a year's supply of bug rolls in less than a week? Yep, and they didn't cost me a penny. If I'd have won a lifetime supply, it would have been better than winning the lottery. What were you talking to Karen about? Uh, now. Just winding her up, you know. Why didn't you tell Steve nothing happened? Oh, I did, didn't I? He just didn't believe me. He's obviously got some wires loose in his brain. Yeah? Well, maybe we should cool things down, then. Cool what down? We haven't done anything, so there's nothing to cool down. Karen, I've had Mike having a go at me and Dev in the shop. Dev? Well, how does he know? All right, I see. Steve's been telling everyone, has he? I'm gonna flip and kill him. 
You see, I, I could be assigned to a really difficult murder case, uh, which could mean staying in a hotel for weeks on end. I mean, where a man's liberty's concerned, you can't afford to rush these things. Norris. <laughs> She's never had the call. Oh, isn't he lovely? Mm -hmm. Babies like Norris, don't they, Norris? They do, yeah. I don't know what it is. Do you know, I once went into mother care and four toddlers followed me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look, here's Daddy. What's he doing here? Where's my dad? Uh, well, uh, have you not just come to pick him up? No. My dad was meant to have a foot day while I was in the shop. Oh, right. Well, he just dropped him off for a bit. He said he'd be back in an hour. And how long ago was that? Oh, it'll be a couple of hours now, won't it? I'll take him. Well, oh, he's got his, uh, his changing bag here somewhere. Oh. You know, if you're ever stuck, I could babysit when I'm not working. Yeah, thanks. Here. Where is he? Out. He's out? Yeah. I suppose you've heard these lies he's been spreading about me and Joe. I'm sure he's told you everything. Mm, no. Yeah, well, it's not true, right? None of it. It's all in his head. Mm. He said to tell you he's up in the flat. What? He said if you call to tell you that he's up in the flat and he's doing some spring cleaning. And I'm meant to go and see him, am I? I don't know, but it'd make my life a lot easier if you two would start speaking to each other. I'll speak to him. When he crawls back to me on his belly over broken glass and apologises. And you can tell him that. <laughs> Have you lost something as well? Have you seen the raffle, Mummy? I thought it went on top of it too. No, I've not seen it all day. What do you think you're doing, leave it, baby, Rita? Here yeah, we're only for a few minutes. Uh, I think I'd better go and give Harry a hand. Two Good hours, man. Norris said. I'm sorry, Rita offered. And I had things to do over here, and you said I'd not to bring him into a smoky pub. Yeah, well, we can't keep living in with neighbours. That we should get a child man to give us an open hand. Oh, yes. Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> Shall I ring one of the agencies? No, I'd rather do it myself. If I do leave me someone, it's got to be the right person. Haven't you got important work to do? I'm on my tea break. Thought you were off your feet in the NHS. Sure, not complaining about the standard of care you're receiving, surely? No, I don't need babysitting. I'm to leave. Don't mind. Has the doctor been round yet? Yeah, she explained everything. Good. You happy with it all? Would you be? Well, no. I'd hate it, but... Well, I can think of a lot worse things. Right, so I should count my blessings. Well, there's nothing more you can do about it, so you might as well get on with it. I don't think much to your bedside manner. Yeah, well, it's cutbacks. I haven't got time for all this mollycoddling. You do realise you're taking up a bed that could be used by a really, really sick person. Oh. Well, maybe I should go home, then. Er, uh, no, you don't. While you're here, we're in charge, OK? If he tell you, then you can go home. Hmm. No, seriously. You won't ask anything about anything. Just ask me, OK? Yeah, all right. OK. Right, better get off. I have others to heal. <laughs> what do you want, Neil? You know, I'm just trying to be supportive. I um, figure you could do with a friend. Since when have you been a friend of mine, Devs? Well, since your last friend started playing footsie with your wife. You know, I never knew she had so many clothes. She's been hiding stuff in the flat. The wardrobe is never full because she's got boxes of shirts, jackets and whatnot hidden cupboards. She's been hiding stuff in me drawers, can well, you...? It's a good idea. Get rid of it. Get rid of all her stuff. Make a fresh start. I think you're enjoying this. No, how many times have I warned you about Carter? The man is evil. He's a sly, venomous snake. Now, I tell Mike this once a week, and what does he do? Nothing. No, did you remember the way he treated uh, Gina? Like, he destroyed that girl. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. Didn't you pay a big part in that, eh? <laughs> no, listen, wait, I'm sorry. Are you defending a man who had his hands all over your wife uh, last night? No. No, listen, wait, listen, everyone's seen him flirting with her. Everyone. I'm amazed you let it get this far. Me? Yeah, it's like he's been trying to uh, humiliate you. Come on, he seduces your wife in front of your face and then he rubs your nose in it? Frankly, I'm impressed at your restraint. If it was me, I'd, um... Shh! Now, Harry, have you had any thoughts on this memorial bench for Maxine? Uh, I don't know. Um, summit, summit in cast iron and oak, preferably bolted down so it doesn't get nicked and end up in someone's garden. Right. Where's the money? Excuse me? The raffle money, I can't find it. I left it on the till, I thought you'd taken it. I've not touched it. 
Betty said it was there yesterday. Have you moved it? No, I've not. Well, it's not there now. What are you saying, Fred? I'm not saying out. I just want to know where it's got to so I can order Maxine's memorial bench. It was my idea having that raffle. Yes, of course it was. Yes, that's why I'm asking where money is. I don't like the tone of your voice. Uh, really? There's a touch of the accuser in there, a hint of a prosecuting counsel. If you think I've stolen that money, at least have the guts to come out and say it. I'm not saying that. Ah, but you're implying it. You want to strip search me, eh? Do you want to, want to go through my pockets? No. Eh? Check my wallet? Oh, no, you've got hold of the wrong end at stake. Really? I don't think so. I notice you haven't interrogated Betty or Peter or Maria. Well, no, no I... a bond of trust has been broken. And if you wish to refer the matter to the police authorities, I'll be happy to help them out with their investigations. Refer but I'm them... sorry. I can't work in an atmosphere of suspicion and distrust. I resign. Harry! Are you coming for a drink? Uh, not tonight. I'm visiting Katie. Oh, yes, yeah, you're all right. Yeah, yeah, she will be here. Are you coming? Uh, do bed. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Karen? Uh, she's in Kaiser. You better go and get her. Oh, Steve. What do you want? I want him. Steve. Mate, you got it all wrong. Nothing happened. Look, I wanted to tell you. Karen told me not to. Hey, listen to me. You know, mate of mine. You understand that? Yes, what are you doing? Flick me now. <laughs> right, get out before I find the police. Just one on. more thing. You want my way? You can have her. What are you doing? Do you hear that? Do you understand? I don't care anymore. You've made your choice. Do you want him? There he is. Have him. Because this marriage is over. <laughs>